And you were a student of Attilio Scienza, right? Correct, yes. <laughs> Uh, a lot of years ago, but yeah, of course, in, in Milan, yes. I'm seeing him tomorrow, so I'll say hello. Italian Wine Podcast. Chin Chin with Italian Wine People. Welcome to On the Road with Stevie Kim. In this episode, Stevie chats with Fabio Zanato, the president of the Consorzio Tutela Lugana DOC, and tastes examples of Lugana wines from his family's cantina, Le Morette. Hello, my name is Stevie Kim and this is Mama Jumbo Shrimp on the road edition. We are here um, in Lugano area all day today. So we'll be going to a few of the uh, wineries who are awardees of Five Star Wines. Today we're here with Mr. Zenato um, because he's also the president of the consortium, which we will talk about in a little bit, consortium of Lugano. But he's also... Um, a winemaker, and his winery is called Le Morette, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. So I just thought before we get we start talking about the consortium, we want to have a little taste of also his wines. Would you mind? Good. Okay. Thank so you. Uh, let's start. What, what, what shall we taste first? The first one we taste uh, is uh, Lugana Mandolara, okay. which is um, our flagship wine because this. Oh, wine, this is your flagship yes, wine. Yes. Okay. This, this this bottle. Uh, represents, let's say, two thirds of our Lugana bottles. Okay. So, I mean, this is uh, the, the, the base where we start for every tasting, mm -hmm. and the bottle that is most representative in the winery all around the world. So, let's okay. me pour to you. And this is the recent vintage, is that correct? Correct. That's a fresh vintage, 2021 vintage. Mm -hmm. Yes. 2021. Yes. Okay. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your flagship wine. Lugana Mandalara is the real ID of, of the winery and of our territory. We are located in uh, Peschiera del Garda as winery and uh, most of the vineyards, we run 50 hectares of vineyards and most of the vineyards are in between of here and Desenzano, so two, two main blocks, let's say. And we want to uh, really give the authentic expression of the grape variety, Turbiana, the indigenous grape variety, uh, the response of this variety on clay soils. Thanks God we have medium aged plants, 20 years and plus, mm -hmm. and a lot of clay in our vineyards. So this uh, fresh green sensation in the nose that we is uh, normally confirming on the taste and it's uh, closing with a great sapidity hint. Mm -hmm make the wine very interesting as a, let's say, aperitivo style wine, but at the same time, it uh, suggests a wine with a lot of fruit pairing. So how old is your winery? The winery is uh, quite old because we started back in the 60s. In reality, uh, our company started as a vine nursery. Oh, so right. We, we bring together vine nursery activity, so grafting vines and uh, wine production. So the winery was started by my grandfather uh, on a very small dimension that was enlarged with my father, Valerio Zanatto, which is still very important in the winery because he's the guy of the vineyard, let's say. He's right. every day in the vineyard, right? We are a traditional Azienda Agricola based on the family. So you are um, related to the Zanatto winery. Uh, How are you related? Because yes. you, you're obviously Zanatto, your name is Zanatto. Oh, so are you, how are you related? Our parents are cousins, so oh, okay. of course there's a right, relative right. Uh, parental, of course, right. but uh, since the origin we are separate because we are mostly vine nursery mm -hmm. that grow as winery later, let's say, with my, right, right. my father that grew up and then me and my brother Paolo, which are now on show, let's say, uh, are developing the, the wine business in a quicker, let's say, relatively quicker speed. Let's so uh, is your nursery specialized in um, particular type of rootstocks? Uh, the vine nursery, mm -hmm. since ever, is of course specialized in the territory where we live. So the territory of Lake Garda mm -hmm. and the, the close area of Verona and Brescia mostly. So from Soave, Valpolicella, Val Davide, Custozza to, or to the Franciacota area. And then of course the production includes also a lot of international grape varieties like mm -hmm. I mean Chardonnay and all the. And who are your who are your clients from locally mostly or also nationally? So mostly are locally, mm -hmm. also because let me underline this: the vine nursery activity mm -hmm. is kind of trust. 
you know, the vineyard is coming and ordering the plants for next year plantation. Right. And then waiting three years to get the first grape mm -hmm. bunches. So in this long time, you need to grow a lot of trust in between of you and your clients. Yeah, of course. And uh, this is something that is really characterizing our style. We want to plan, project the vineyard with our clients. So the, the, vine, the vineyard is coming and asking for a specific direction of his vineyard looking for a better expression in acidity or getting a more intensity in the red structure of the wine. And so from there you start to plan the future of a vineyard and of a wine. Okay. That's our style, more custom fit, let's right. say. Right, so are there other um, nurseries around this area? There are some others in the Verona province, mostly in the eastern shore of Verona and uh, in the eastern part of Veneto, close to the territory of Friuli Venezia Giulia, where they're the biggest, let's say, player. But our focus is specializing in indigenous varieties, right. which is quite unique. And you were a student of Attilio Scienza, right? Correct, yes. <laughs> A lot of years ago, but yeah, of course, in, in Milan, yes. I'm seeing him tomorrow, so I'll say hello. Thank you. Please okay. do this. Tonight. All right, I'm ready for another wine. Would you like to... Yes. Um... Next one will be our Lugana Benedictus, which is our crew, Lugana. Uh, what is the production, by the way, of the... Of this? Yeah. Here we are around 350,000 bottles. Okay. Next Mandolara. One, Mandolara, yes. Next one is uh, Benedictus, which is our cool gas. Who gives the name of the, the uh, wines? Nice. Mandolara gets the name from a long line of almond trees, okay. which is circum, uh, surround, let's say, most the of vineyard. the vineyards, yes. Okay. In this case, is the Latin name of San Benedetto, our little village. Mm -hmm. You know, this area was, uh, uh, let's say, Firstly, created by the Benedictine monks that were in oh, the area. Okay. And my grandfather's winery was uh, built in the area of the gardens of the Benedictine monks, very close to the church. Okay, so, so for that reason, we wanted to go back to the Latin uh, uh, name of the, of the monks, let's say. So here we are with the 2019 vintage. Mm -hmm. And what is the difference between the two, besides the vintages? the two wines, the Benedictus so and Mandolara. In, in this case, the Benedictus has a very different profile because a single vineyard, very old, 46 year old plants. So the, the vines are older here? Older, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, late harvest. So you pick from, them later? From here to here, we have four weeks. Oh. And four weeks for a, a white grape are so important in terms of uh, switching the profile of the wine. In a, uh, let's say more ripe sensation in the fruit and of course the skin yeah. color is yeah. getting much more gold in reflections and the final color in the glass is moving to this direction of gold. Then here we have uh, during the fermentation that runs with uh, spontaneous yeast under thermical, thermical control uh, one portion of the wine is uh, finishing is ending the fermentation in a French oak tonneau. This uh, gets to another direction in terms of texture of the wine and length of the wine. So when did you start producing this wine? I mean, with the, with the, using the wood? This, because uh, traditionally it's not, you know, you don't use wood for Lugana, right? Yeah, in fact, the majority of Lugana refers to the first yeah, one, right? Yeah, very, very clean, very yeah, direct. Fresh. Uh, the production of uh, this wine goes back to the 1990, Three, 1994, first vintages. Mm -hmm. So it's a very long, long story in the family, uh, but still maintaining this very uh, integrated style of the oak aging in the fruity style of the wine. Mm -hmm. And then it uh, normally stays minimum nine months in bottle before to be released in the market. Very important to create and moderate the balance inside the sensation of the wine. And, and what about the production, smaller? Yes, yeah. of course. Here we are around 35,000 bottles. Yeah, much smaller. Yes, much yeah. smaller. And what is the difference in terms of price points, like retail price? Retail price would be, let me say, here we are around 10, 10? and here we are around 15. Okay. And, it, and when, it, when does it get released? Normally, the year after of the harvest. This is the current vintage? This is ending. Okay. Uh, we are now in the current vintage on 2020. 
Oh, okay. To September, right, right. And the 2021 will be unsure. Normally, you know, it's it varies depending on the season of the harvest and on the evolution in bottle. Let's say. Okay. So, which one would you prefer? Do you prefer? Considering today a sunny, hot day, no discussion. Mandalara. Mandalara. Yeah. But considering, it's refreshing. brava. But considering uh, another situation of a nice dinner with uh, risotto with fungi and so on, for sure the second one. <laughs> He's getting hungry, and Joe is getting hungry. You said <laughs> risotto con fungi. <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, the second one is much more a, a food bearing wine, yeah, I'd say. It's in, more in respect driven. to the first one, where okay. the, the, the fresh and green sensation are dominant and gets in this perfectly in this season, let's say. Okay, all right, I'm ready for the next wine. Yeah. What are we drinking next? Next wine is. Uh, as I love to say, more than a wine, it's a project because it's um, Lugana Riserva. Okay. Lugana Riserva, it's a, a specific typology in the denomination, in the appellation. Mm -hmm. uh, still very, let's say, uh, limited in quantity. But it's longer aging, essentially, it's, right? Uh, exactly. It's based on the potential of aging that Lugana uh, shows, let's say, as, as grape. <clears throat> what we are tasting today is 2018. Mm -hmm. And that's the current vintage. So by regulation, Luganda Reserva uh, could be released two years after the harvest. Okay. In reality, the producers in Lugana, which are not so many, 15, mm -hmm. on a base of 90 plus wineries, uh, are waiting a third year. So normally now it's 19, 1819, the current vintage of this, of this wine. Here, um, we combine part of, uh, let's say, normal ripening harvest time mm -hmm. and some overripe grapes, let's say. So it's a combination. Why? The project here is not only a single vineyard, but it's a, uh, the real potential of the wine looking toward the evolution after three or four years. So it's something, that, of course, mostly are very old vineyards, but not the oldest, right? And then it can vary the vineyard of origin, depending on the season. Here, I would say complexity and uh, finesse, elegance are the two dominant characters. Is it a little bit more alcoholic? A little bit, yes. Just a slight, right? Yes, correct. But similar to the um, Similar Benedictus. to the Benedictus, just 0 0.5 more, yeah. more or less. Yes, yeah, so similar, very similar. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, in terms of the... Um, the taste mm -hmm. on the palate. What is the main difference? Like in a blind tasting, what yeah. is the difference? In the Benedictus, we the, the focus is still on fruity sensation, mm -hmm. tropical notes, uh, apricots, uh, yellow peaches. Here in the Luganda Reserva, we are getting the minerality growing up in the wine, and not so much, not so many fruity sensation mm -hmm. are still there. It's another ripening point on the grapes, right? Here, normally there's more acidity. This is this more style. acidic? Brava, see. Si. Because it has to age longer, right? Correct. It's, I would say it's kind of a mandolara in another version, let's say. It's a 2018. Uh, one portion, a small portion, is ending the fermentation in oak barrels, and then minimum 12 to 18 months in bottle, depending on the year. Bottle aging, yeah. Aging, um, so what, is, what, what would you say, I mean, mandolara you drink straight away, ready to drink. Um, can Benedictus age as well, yeah. in your opinion? Yeah. So wh when is the optimal time to drink Benedictus and the Reserva? That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, Benedictus, in my opinion, now we are enjoying this 2019, mm -hmm. which is, uh, in my idea, in a very great uh, shape in terms of complexity and harmony of the sensations. In the Reserva, the 18, I think, can still grow for another two years. So five years is a good point of, of um, expression of dimension of the wine, let's say. So you, uh, you think Reserva can last another couple of years? Can... It, the optimal? Can, yes, yeah. to the optimal dimension, yes. I mean, I mean when, I'm, when I say optimal, I mean, what I mean is, will it get better? Yeah. 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 It will get better. Now we are in a higher part of the graphic, let's say, in a kind of plateau. Mm -hmm. So the, the increase now will not be as high as it was in the last two years for this wine, in my opinion. Getting to the high quality, high profile stability, let's say, okay. for the next years. 
Already. And uh, thank you for this question because the next one will be an old vintage of the Reserva. Ah, to show okay. You to how it yes, has aged. Exactly. Okay, very good. We are ready for the Risalva, and the vintage is? Is uh, the 13. Oh, 13? Yes. So, so. Way, way older. When did you start doing the Reserva? Reserva started in the, the, the very first vintage was 2011. So we are back to the first two vintages here, let's say. Uh, the 2011 was the first one, very little number of bottles and of producers. Then 2013 were the real initial production phase, let's say. So here we are on a wine that has been bottled, um, let me say, in, in 2015, so seven years ago. And here you start to realize the evolution of Lugana after some years. You see the color is getting this uh, intense gold reflection, but then on the nose. I, want, I need you to explain to our, our audience, when you say a wine is vertical, what do you mean by that? The meaning of this, in my opinion, is uh, related to the acidity and pH. Mm -hmm. So these two characters that show kind of uh, a straight direction from the nose to the dominant taste in the mouth and to the aftertaste. So this, uh, in the end, can, this minerality shows you the, the end of the vertical dimension of the wine, getting this extra salivation, let's say. And in the central phase, in the mouth tasting, you have, yes, kind of little fruits, but very uh, limited, mostly dominated to this salivation and minerality sensation. I don't know, maybe it's, it's cold, but it's like, I feel like this is more acidic, mm -hmm. you know, it, and it's, even if it's older, mm -hmm. is that possible? Uh, the vintage, yeah. yes, yes. Maybe the temperature is a bit different, yeah. you're right, but uh, uh, this wine, after so long time, for sure reflects more, close, more closely the season. Oh, okay. Listen, so how, how long can this last? How long can this, like, can you ah. drink it? I will let you know in the next future. Let's see. We still have some left <laughs> bottles and we have to taste them. You know, we are speaking about vintage number two. Right, right. So of this you, appellation, yeah. this typology in the appellation. So still very young. Okay. But I think that you feel this yeah, uh, freshness I, I, and this... Yeah, uh, I, I mean, yeah. We can switch from the 18 to the 13 very easily in the tasting. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of... Uh, it's very interesting. Thank you, Thank and, you for uh, that. Let me underline two notes. Uh, this idea starting from some producers tasting let's say, the stainless steel version of the wine after some years. So it was not science, it was experience and wanting to discover the potential of this variety in a long aging profile. Yeah, ex excellent. Thank you for sharing your old vintage library wine. Okay. Thank you for being here. Okay. Are we done with the wines? Yeah. Okay, say, very good. So that's it. Uh, let's just close up. So we... We've tasted um, three wines. One is a Mandolara, then Benedictus, and two vintages of um, the Risalva, and that was 18 and 15. So check that out. How can they find your wines, and where can they find your wines? Oh, we are present online. in different markets. Right. Online, on the website of the winery for sure. Mm -hmm. And then also in, the market, in Europe, we are well represented, and. We are approaching the United States, we are approaching some foreign markets, but of course, still a step-by-step what, what step process. Is, what, is the diff, what is, in terms of percentage, um, Italy and export? Uh, yeah, we are 60 export, 40 Italy, okay. and this 60 of export is mostly Europe. Right. But we are growing in the US, mostly in the eastern coast. Mm -hmm. uh, we are present in Japan, we are in Taiwan, so we are here and there, we are with Lot of little flex. That's okay, it. very good. So that's it. It's a wrap from Le Morette with Fabio Zenata. Ciao ragazzi. Ciao, grazie. And that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us and be sure to tune in next time. For more fascinating interviews from the world of wine, go to italianwinepodcast.com or find us on SoundCloud, Jimalaya, Spotify, or wherever you get your pods. Chin chin and thanks for listening.